Hello everyone, uh, we'd love to welcome you to this uh, wonderful presentation for our internship experiences. Uh, this is, was uh, a fulfillment of our Moji 7 uh, uh, exam. We did our internship in Zambia and uh, my name is uh, Jay Friday Mtolo. And I'm Shabasiana. Before we even go further, we'd love to take you through the outline just to show you how we'd love to have this presentation. Uh, we have our introduction as the first thing, we have our learning objectives, then we have our activities undertaken during the internship period, and we have uh, classroom experience and course when we to the internship itself, and also we have reflections and internship experience and the profession, the GMH profession. We, have, we also talk about the favorite, uh, our favorite blogs. As you, as you may be aware, we have uh, a site called Tumblr where we are sharing our internship experiences and we, it was a requirement for us as students to blog. Uh, we we'll also talk about our favorite tasks and learning objective. And uh, we we'll talk about competences and skills acquired during this uh, internship period. We we'll also talk about the best aspects of the internship. And lastly, but not the least, we we'll talk about tips for future internship. Yeah, so just like I mentioned earlier on, we did our internship in Zambia, which is our home country for both of us. We were actually practically situated in the Lusaka province, which is the capital city of Zambia. And uh, we did our internship with uh, the Ministry of Health, which looks at uh, health issues in Zambia, but it does not do this alone. It does this with uh, the Ministry of Community Development and also other interested partners. As you can see here, this is the head office, it's called Ndeke House. Uh, we were specifically interning with the Directorate of Disease Surveillance and uh, Research and, Con and Control. Under the Ministry of Health, we have quite a number of directorates. But under this specific directorate, we have also other units which look at different uh, issues. They look at food safety, they look at uh, communicable disease, non-communicable diseases. Also have a department which looks at communicable diseases. We also have a department which is called the nutrition unit. So just to make it clear from the beginning, we were specifically attached to the nutrition unit. And uh, as, as a way of uh, making it possible for us to also attain our objectives, it was also inevitable for us to also be partially attached to the Ministry of Community Development and Mother and Child and Health. As I mentioned earlier on, the Ministry of Health and this ministry work hand in hand. The Ministry of Health is very much focused on the secondary health care, and the Community Development Ministry focuses on primary health care. We also worked with the Clinton Health Access Initiative. We had some objectives which were looking at uh, qualitative research. And apparently, prior to our traveling to Zambia, we had agreed with the host supervisor that we were going to participate in some research activities, but unfortunately, due to funding and logistical issues, those research activities could not be uh, flagged off. And as a result, lucky enough, actually, the, the, the director, the director linked us to CHI, which, was, which is the partner in implement, implementation of various health programs. CHI made it possible for us to have this uh, research aspect and to also fulfill our, our objectives. Uh, the beautiful lady you see there, this is Madam Agnes Angola. She, uh, this was our host supervisor, and uh, that's her office. As you can see, you can see a lot of files behind. I think this is the challenge we have in developing countries where we don't have enough computers and people still use hard copies to store information that to put on the files. It's a bit uh, cumbersome and tedious. Okay, um, I'll just take you through our learning objectives that we formulated prior to our going for internship. Uh, Jay and I had uh, more or less the same objectives. So we, had, uh, we both had three objectives. And our first objective was to gain practical experience in planning, implementation, and monitoring of uh, nutrition-related programs. Then our second objective was to gain practical experience in qualitative research methods. And our third objective was to develop an understanding of how the nutrition unit collaborates with Ministry of Community Development, Mother and Child Health, and 
other stakeholders when planning, implementing, and monitoring of nutrition-related activities. So um, do, um, some of the activities that we undertook during, during our eight-week internship period were as follows. As a point of departure, we were required to prepare work plans as the first activity. So these work plans were to guide us uh, were to guide us to achieve our objectives. Then uh, we also drafted and had in, handed in letters, uh, and these letters uh, required us to seek permission to visit the Ministry of Community Development, Mother and Child Health, and also we had to get permission to take photos. Then um, we were also we we also reviewed action plans. So as to understand the programs which are being implemented by the nutrition unit, and we also try to gain an understanding or an insight on how most of these programs are planned. Then our routine activities were as follows. We attended departmental meetings with representatives from various organizations. As you may be aware, the Ministry of Health is a the Ministry of Health of Health headquarters is a a policy institution. This is where policies are planned. So we had a lot of um, stakeholders coming in for meetings and uh, some of the, the meetings that we attended were for Ministry of Health in collaboration with UNICEF and uh, ZECAD. Yeah, uh, apart from uh, routine activities as uh, my colleague Sheila was explaining, we also had some activities which we categorize as major activities. We call them major activities because we felt these activities actually contributed a lot to us uh, achieving our objectives and having a broader picture of actually what is happening on the ground concerning nutrition and health in line with uh, our place of internship. So as the first major activity, uh, we participated in a review meeting of the 1,000 most critical Days program, which is being implemented in 14 districts. Uh, this program is aimed and at re reducing stunting levels. As you may be aware, research now shows that the most window of opportunity for, uh, for, for as, as a possible period of intervention to prevent stunting is within the f first 1,000 critical days from conception. Yeah, in this program, I must. I must mention that actually it was a big opportunity for us. This was a very high profile meeting. It was actually a review and planning meeting at the same time. This program has already been flagged off. As I said, it's running in 14 districts, but during this meeting, we're trying to assess so as to see the successes and also the failures as a way to chart the way forward to ensure that this program is a success. We had quite a number of organizations coming together. We had uh, the, the Scale Up Nutrition Organization as a group coming together in trying to see, to chart the way forward. And uh, just to mention that for our Modi 5 and 6 uh, policy, as a policy exam, we did a policy on Zimbabwe looking at the 1,000 1, most critical days as a way of as a window of opportunity to reduce stunting in Zimbabwe. So I must be honest that this, you know, attending this planning meeting, it was an opportunity for us to try to see how this is actually done practically, other than what we did in class. We were looking at the theory, and uh, we saw how much, how much it can be a challenge, actually, because we reached a stage whereby, as we are having this meeting, I think Sheila might also conquer with me, a lot of reflections, a lot of issues came out and people at some point were stuck, not, know, not knowing which way to go. So I tell you, I think it was a big opportunity for us to attend this. We also, look at, we also looked at, uh, we also attended the, a meeting, a planning meeting, it's actually a national survey, which is looking at the levels of micronutrient deficiency in Zambia. Yeah, it was, there's been a concern to say that a lot of interventions which are currently taking place in Zambia, aimed at uh, uh, reducing deficiencies in micronutrients. And just to mention, I think 
vitamin vitamin A is one of those nutrients where everyone is, is trying to put their energy and focus on. Now the concern is, as much as we'd want to do these interventions to reduce, reduce deficiencies in micronutrients, we should also try to establish the levels of deficiency. Because apparently, as of now, as it stands, it's like we don't have clear information in Zambia which shows which groups, which, uh, which people, which areas we have these deficiencies. There's, I should mention that uh, actually there is a concern to say that could, we could be overwhelming people with uh, these interventions without actually knowing what the problem is. So the way forward on this one, we're trying to chart the way forward by trying to assess which way would be the better way to assess these levels of deficiency. There are suggestions which came up, such as using the 24-hour uh, recall, uh, so as to see uh, what, what sort of deaths pe uh, people have had in the last 24 hours as a proxy of assessing deaths, uh, levels of uh, nutrients, micronutrients in these, uh, these deaths. But on the other hand, there were arguments to say that this was not enough. It was, others were saying it was important for us to also use biomarkers. Because biomarkers are almost a sure way of finding out levels of deficiency and also establishing which groups are deficient. But unfortunately, other people argue to say it would, it would be a, a, a expensive exercise to use biomarkers. And uh, I think as I, as, I, as, as, I, as I remember, Sheila can uh, remind me well, we are stuck on this one. By the time we are leaving, a decision was not made actually on the way forward. Yeah, and actually, um, during the same planning meeting that we had on the national survey, it reminded me of the group uh, group that we usually have at school. There comes a time when we all become stuck and people's tempers fly and all that. But we came to learn that actually, even people at national level, they at some point get stuck and don't know what to do. So this, I think, was uh, quite an interesting learning point for us. Yeah. Then, um, just to add on what Jay has said, there were also issues of um, vitamin A um, supplementation or interventions not, reach, not reaching the intended groups. An example was the issue of uh, supplementing vitamin A in sugar. Uh, if you look at the setup in Zambia, most of the people who might be prone to vitamin A deficiencies are in the rural areas. And then you find that most of the people in the rural areas cannot afford to buy sugar. So all these issues came out during the national survey meeting. Yeah. Just to shed light on, just to add uh, just a bit on vitamin A itself. I must mention that actually there are a lot of uh, foodstuffs which are being used as a vehicle for vitamin A supplementation right now in Zambia. As she was mentioned, sugar is one of them. And uh, there is also a research which they are doing right now, and this is called the orange maize. Yeah, they're making the orange maize, which will be also used as a vehicle for vitamin A. And actually, we had an opportunity to test the shima, which yeah. is made from the yellow maize, from exactly. the orange maize. Yeah, and also we, we have this project in Wapula, where they're using palm oil as also a means to supplement vitamin A itself. So already that also came out in the discussion as uh, and we having too many interventions. Are, they, are, are these interventions not colliding at some point? Yeah. And uh, again, if um, Jay, I think you agree with me, there are other issues which came up because uh, people from other organizations were um, trying to find out why the government and these other stakeholders are trying so much to concentrate on micronutrients when there is another problem which, problem which has arisen from Zambia and this is the issue of obesity. The um, demographic health survey report which just uh, came out for 2013 is showing that obesity rates, especially among women, has risen from 19% to 23%. So I think um, people were more concerned that already the government is doing so much on um, micronutrient um, supplementation and they are not doing a lot on tackling the issue of obesity rates in Zambia. Yeah. Then uh, we also participated in a psychosocial training of uh, counselors at Mombe Clinic. This clinic is situated in um, Lusaka province. Yeah. So uh, we had an opportunity to give our knowledge on nutrition together with the nutritionist at the clinic.
Then uh, we had an opportunity to participate in the integrated management of acute malnutrition at the University Teaching Hospital, Ward L7. Uh, so during our time at Ward L7, as you may be aware actually, the integrated management of acute malnutrition has been implemented to reduce under five mortality rates. And I think the ministry has achieved on this one because the under five mortality rate in Zambia was 591,000 uh, life deaths, but now it's, it has reduced to 351. So I think this is a milestone in um, the yeah. integrated management of acute malnutrition. Yeah, just to add on, uh, in case you may wonder what, what, what the L7 is. What the all seven is a word which specifically looks at integrated management of acute malnutrition or severe malnutrition, if you may call it. This is done at the most, the, the biggest referral hospital in Zambia called the University Teaching Hospital. And uh, our participation uh, merely here involved uh, uh, routine uh, weight checkups and also participating, participating in admission, admission procedures such as uh, measuring the, hei the heights and also clinical assessments, yeah, just to mention a few. Yeah, we also give uh, nutrition education to the mothers. Yeah. We also participated in dietetic management of various ailments at the University Teaching Hospital College. As you may be aware, this hospital admits people with different complications, conditions, and uh, of late there's been uh, a lot of talk concerning nutrition management being inculcated into management of these uh, complications. For instance, there are patients, diabetic patients, patients with hypertension, uh, were able to use some of the skills, some of the theoretical knowledge we learned in class to, to be able to assist in uh, uh, prescription of uh, various diets to these people. Then we also uh, took part in growth monitoring promotion activities, and this was um, under the Ministry of Community Development, Mother and Child. And during the growth monitoring and promotion activities, we uh, participated in um, weighing of the children. Then we also participated in the administering of vaccines, such as uh, polio vaccine. Then we also uh, we were also given an opportunity to give um, nutrition education to mothers. Yeah. Then uh, this was also an opportunity for us to capture malnourished children, whom we eventually referred to the nutritionist at the nearest clinic. Just to add on, uh, on this growth monitoring, growth monitoring program uh, activity, uh, let me just mention to you that our the under five cards in Zambia are structured in such a way that you are able to see if uh, the mother went for HIV testing uh, prior to birth, and uh, there are some, uh, some options there where you tick, whether the mother is exposed, if the mother is exposed, it means, if the child is exposed, it means the child was born from a mother who was HIV positive. If, the, if he says non exposed, it means the child was not born to a mother who was uh, HIV positive. And some, there's also another option which shows that actually the mother never went for testing. But just to share with you, was I think this, I feel this, is, this is of great concern. I've just discussed with my colleague Sheila. We tried, I think, uh, to, call it, to, to pick out under five cards randomly, maybe 20 cards. From, from maybe uh, from, from 20 cards we picked randomly, we discovered that actually 14, 15, or 16 children were actually born from mothers who are HIV positive. And uh, this brought to attention how much the prevalence of HIV AIDS is in these communities. But uh, what actually touched us uh, more uh, as we discovered this was to realize that actually it was these children who were born from mothers who were HIV positive who had a lot of weight for tari. And as a, as, a, as a way of trying to find out, we, asked, we tried to ask the mothers why, was, why this was so. And we came to realize that actually these mothers had different information concerning breastfeeding practices. Most of them, the fact that they were HIV positive, they thought they were not supposed to breastfeed exclusively. So some of them breastfeed only for two months, others for three months. And we went further, just after discovering this, we went further even to ask the staff to find out what the, the information they had on this. And we realized that even the staff themselves had distorted information. 
there was no uniform information concerning breastfeeding in regards to mothers who are HIV positive. But and I think I, that is at uh, community level because right now the policy in Zambia is that uh, all mothers who are, who are HIV positive are supposed to breastfeed exclusively. Yes. But I think the problem lies with the staff. This information, if the policy is there at national level, mm -hmm. it's like the, the staff are not very much covers under this information and we feel maybe there's need for there's need for reorientation of this stuff and sensitization yeah. as a way to... So I think I can just um, take you back. It also applies to uh, the diabetic management of various ailments and specifically the NCDs. Right now the country doesn't have uh, a policy on um, guideline I mean, on the management of NCDs in the country. They only have a draft. So uh, we found that a lot of patients have got uh, different views on what kind of foods they're supposed to eat, more especially the diabetic patients. And this is because when they go to different uh, hospitals, they are given different information. So they are kind of confused. So I think the country also needs to work on that. Then uh, we also participated in the analysis of qualitative data at Clinton Health Access Initiative. Like we mentioned earlier on, one of our objectives was to uh, gain practical experience in qualitative methods. So um, when we went to KIND, we found that they were doing uh, some research activities, but due to ethical reasons, we are not allowed to uh, conduct focus group discussion or in-depth uh, in discussions. Yeah, so we were only allowed to observe the focus group discussion, so that's what we did. But it was a great opportunity for us to participate in the analysis of qualitative data. I mean, we have done that in module we did that in module, module 4, but um, it was at an advanced stage. Yeah, so th these are some of the photos we, we took. That's um, uh, Sheila and me there, um, taking a height for a child who is actively malnourished at uh, Wadi L7 UTH. That's me there, uh, during the growth point and promotion, but I shared this at one, one of my blocks. As you can see, this is against the tenets of uh, way. As you can see, this child is heavily clothed, clothed in. So when you wear this child, perhaps you might, you might think that your, this child has got normal weight, and yet that weight is not an actual weight, it's a pseudo weight. It's this, way, this high weight is caused by these clothes which are on this child. Yeah. Then uh, this is um, some of the feed. This is therapeutic feed. This, as you can see, this is F75. Rizom and there's also uh, F100. These are some of the feeds which are used in the IMAM program, which is the Integrated Management of Acute Malnutrition. Then uh, this was one of uh, this was me during one of the review clinics. I was doing um, the mid upper arm circumference. We were also advised to do the head circumference so as to know the normal growth of the brain. Yeah. Then this was during the community-based growth monitoring and promotion. I think it was the same day that uh, Jay took his. Work. This is a child with, uh, with Kwashoko. As, as you can see, the child is edematous. That's me, they are trying to measure the levels of edema. Uh, just to mention that this child was previously on this uh, program of acute man severe, severe malnutrition management, was later on discharged, but has now been readmitted. readmitted. It was perhaps maybe no in a proper pro uh, regime at home, or maybe there's probably no enough food at home. As you can see, that's the same child there. And then this was uh, during the 1,000 critical days meet, a review meeting that we had. Then um, this was during the growth monitoring and promotion um, activities in the community. And this was during the psychosocial Psycho counseling trainings that we had. Yeah, so in, in regards to what we feel was relevant in class uh, concerning the internship, we must, I must mention that uh, the group tasks that have been given in class were very much of help. Uh, it's because, you know, as we participated in most of these various activities we mentioned to you, we did most of the things in groups. And uh, as I mentioned earlier on, some of, these, some of these deliberations could heat up and people would lose temper, but eventually we could bl all blend in and move forward. So with, the with this skill we acquired in class, it was very easy for us to adapt. 
as you are deliberating these group discussions. And also, the quantitative and the qualitative approaches we did in module three with uh, Alex and also module four with Anne were very much of help. It was very much easy to grasp the concept of uh, qualitative, uh, data, qualitative data analysis at CHI. Our supervisor there was very short that within a day, we were able to start analyzing big, big data. And he, he even trusted us to the extent of giving us the actual surveys to an analyze. Yeah. Then the lessons that we had with Benjamin in um, that was module, module two on anthropometric measurements gave us a better platform to participate in the growth monitoring and promotion activities that we had. Same with the assessment of um, malnourished children at the hospital. Yeah, so a lot of uh, skills we got from module five and six, as we mentioned earlier on, the module we did in Zimbabwe uh, on uh, the 1,000 most critical days, we actually found uh, this program being, has been flagged off in Zambia. It was an important uh, event for us now to relate the theory and the, the, the practice on the field. And, uh, and just to mention that we were able actually even to give some technical advice concerning stakeholder analysis. Once we did this nicely with Russell in class, the, the, the people there in the meeting were very short that we understood stakeholder analysis and everyone was very keen to, to listen to what we had to say. Yeah, so uh, the first module that we had on communication skills prepared us well to communicate effectively with workmates. As you may be aware, as much as we are Zambians coming um, from the same background, we are, we've got uh, different views, uh, we relate differently with people, so at least the communication skills acquired from this education helped us really to communicate effectively with other people at our workplace. Then we would say that the entire course program prepared us well for the problem solving skills. Yes, as for favorite learning objectives, my favorite learning objective was to gain practical experience in planning, implementation, mentoring of nutrition related activities. And uh, my favorite task was to was analysis of qualitative data at CHI. And then um, my favorite uh, learning objective was to gain an understanding on how the ministry collaborates with other stakeholders in implementing nutrition activities. As you may be aware, most of the nutrition activities in the world right now are multifaceted, which um, means that they need different stakeholders to come together so as to solve this problem. So I thought that. If I was going to put more effort on these uh, learning objectives, then I was going to learn a lot. Then uh, my favorite task was uh, writing of weekly reports. Um, I feel that at Metropole we don't do so much of report writing. And the time we start working, I think we'll be required to do more of this. So at Ministry of Health, we're required to write reports every week on the activities that we are being undertaken. There are quite a number of skills we have required. Like uh, we're now able to competently analyze qualitative data and we are now able to work independently. I, we just, I, I, must just mention, I must mention that actually our supervisor never spoon-fed us. In, she made sure that we did everything from the beginning to the end on our own, and this was an opportunity for us even to learn administrative skills, like writing letters to the permanent secretary, and also just to understand the protocol at the uh, workplace of internship. Yeah, because even the policies that we had to review, the action plans, we had to find those on our own. She never get, gave them to us, she had them. Then we've already talked about report writing skills. We also gave uh, planning skills and administrative skills. I think this Jay has already talked about them. Yeah, best aspects of this internship, I think the high profile planning meetings we had, uh, the, the, the Michael Newton survey and also the 1,000 most critical days were the best aspects of Same this internship. The analysis of qualitative yeah. and quantitative data. Was apart from learning one or two things, we were able to mingle with high profile people and we've, made, we've expanded our network mm -hmm. for our future, I mean for our career. Yeah, because yeah. already uh, Clinton Health Access Initiative has offered to take us in for a second internship if we're interested. Lessons of future interns, I think secure internship with place where in advance and have prior uh, information of administrative procedures at the internship place. It's because us, we never had this prior information and when we went, we just we were just told you cannot get photos, you cannot go to this office, you need some permission. So we had to start writing letters afresh. We spent so much time yes. working on this. 
So because we only started getting photos, I think that was three weeks into our internship. Exactly. So I think for the next internship, we'd love that we have this done even before we go for the internship itself. We thank you very much for uh, listening to us. If you have got any patients, you can post them and we'll be able to answer.